Okay, experiment time. Today I'm making pasta dough using four different methods. The ingredients and the measurements will be the same, but the process will be different. I'll make the first batch completely by hand, the second batch using a food processor followed by eight minutes of hand kneading, the third batch using a stand mixer followed by eight minutes of hand kneading, and the fourth batch using a stand mixer with no hand kneading at all. You know my quest to make pasta less arrow prone and more accessible. Many of my viewers have discovered my channel because of my egg pasta video. My strategy boils down to accurate measurements. We weigh the flour and the eggs to ensure that our ratio wet to dry is the same from batch to batch and from person to person. The question my original video doesn't address is how does the machinery affect the texture of the dough? Is there a difference between the dough made by hand with a food processor or with a mixer? Over the years, I've noticed that the mixer seems to produce a dough that's more wet. When it happened to me, I thought it was just the humidity variations. But then it happened to a few of my students in several pasta classes. In class, I do a demo on the food processor, and that's the machine I have most of the students use. If someone tells me that they don't have a processor at home, but have a stand mixer, if possible, I'll have them use the mixer. For some reason, whoever is using the mixer always ends up with a wetter dough than the rest of us. Since we're all making the dough on the same day, we can't blame it on humidity. Of course, in class, it's impossible to set up a good experiment because we are busy actually cooking. But today, I will get to the bottom of this. My egg pasta dough needs two eggs and three yolks. This means that for four batches, I'll need 20 eggs. That's a lot. So here's what I'm going to do. I will do this test on the dough I use for Eastern European dumplings, which needs one egg and one yolk per batch, and the rest is compensated with water. The ratio of wet to dry is the same, 300 grams of bread flour and 185 grams of wet ingredients. It's just that this dough happens to have more water and less eggs. Let's start the old-fashioned way with no machines. For the first batch, I made a well in the flour, added the wet ingredients plus salt, and brought them together. This does take a while. There is a reason why I usually do it in a food processor, even though I hate washing it as much as you do. Now that all the flour is absorbed, let's get the dough out onto a work surface and knead it for eight minutes. This came out just like I expected. No sticking and no need for extra flour. Perfect dough. Let's give it a little dusting of flour, wrap it up, and our first batch is done. To make the dough in a food processor, I combine everything in the bowl with a standard blade and run it until the dough starts to clump up. When I made my original pasta video, I had a much smaller food processor which made the dough look like a tornado. Now that I have a big one, I don't get a tornado unless I double the recipe. Although it looks like a bunch of clumps, it works just as well. Let's get it out onto a work surface. It's important that I remove every last bit of ingredients from the blade and the processor bowl. Otherwise, my ratio wet to dry might be off. This looks good. The food processor replaces the well method and saves me about 10 minutes of work, but it can't knead the stiff dough. That's something I do by hand for eight minutes. This dough seemed absolutely identical to the one I made by hand. Let's give it a little dusting of flour, wrap it up, and our second batch is done. Before I make the dough in the mixer, let me explain different mixer types and their limitations. If your mixer has a C-hook, all it can do is bring the wet and dry together, just like a food processor, but a lot slower. It's easier to wash than a food processor, but takes longer to do its job. 
A sea hook is not effective at kneading a dough that is this stiff. It will whack the bowl around, but it won't develop sufficient gluten. If you have a mixer with a bowl lift rather than a head tilt, you might have a spiral hook. This kind of hook will actually knead the dough, which is very convenient since it allows you to skip the hand kneading. If you're making the dough in a mixer, you can speed things up a bit by putting the wet ingredients into the bowl first. This makes the dough come together faster. If the flour is on the bottom of the bowl, it seems to take forever. The mixer I'm using today has a spiral hook, but I'm using it in two different ways. For the third batch, I am only using the mixer to help me bring the wet and dry together. Here we go. I got a bowl and now I'll continue by hand. At first, it seemed much wetter than what I got out of the food processor, but by the end of my eight minutes of kneading, it turned out about the same as my first two batches. Let's dust it, wrap it, and that's our batch number three. For the final batch, I let the mixer do all the work. Let's wait for it to bring my wet and dry together. Okay, now that I got a bowl, I'll run it for six minutes at low speed to replace hand kneading. You'd think that after all this kneading, the dough would develop enough gluten to stop being sticky, but as you can see, this is the stickiest batch I got so far. None of my other batches were sticking at all by the end of kneading time. I don't have an explanation for this phenomenon. It's possible that the mixer is heating the dough more. It's possible that it's not kneading as effectively and not developing as much gluten as I do by hand. Or maybe it's the other way around. Maybe it's over kneading the dough. Pasta dough is too stiff for a window pane test that is usually done for bread dough to test for gluten development. But whatever the reason, the final result can't be ignored. The dough kneaded by the mixer feels wetter. Of course, that's not necessarily an indication of how this dough will eventually turn out. So let's rest them all for an hour, roll them out and cook them. Normally, I do a lot of folding and rolling with my pasta dough to get out all the air bubbles and to get a nice rectangular shape. During this stage, I'm flouring the dough aggressively. For this experiment, I skipped this step because it's impossible to be consistent with how much flour I'm adding during the folding process. I simply took a small piece of each dough and rolled it out one setting at a time, starting at one and ending at five. Given how different these doughs were during kneading, I expected them to be just as different after resting, but surprisingly, they didn't feel that different. The mixer-only dough was a bit stickier, but not by much. Here are all my samples. I cooked each piece of dough for exactly one minute and tasted each one. The first three batches tasted absolutely identical. The fourth batch was a little softer and not as chewy. That's the one that didn't get any hand kneading since I let the mixer do all the work for me. But even that one was very respectable. So what did we learn today? <laughs> kneading pasta dough in a mixer with a spiral hook instead of doing it by hand will make it feel significantly wetter but the difference won't be nearly as noticeable after the dough rests. Since wetter doughs are more difficult to roll out and taste less chewy after cooking, you might want to increase the flour measurement from 300 to 320 grams right up front if you plan to let the mixer do all the work. But if your dough ends up a bit wetter than you expected, don't worry, simply give it a few extra letter turns, flouring it very generously when rolling it out. Can you guess what I'm going to make with all the dough left over from my experiment? Mm, come back next week and I'll show you. Here are more very detailed culinary tutorials for you to check out. And if you are ever in the Boston area, maybe I'll see you in one of my classes.